Thank you for coming out on such a cold night. I'm sure that everybody's probably happy to be inside instead of outside, but uh, we're very excited to be hosting this workshop this evening, our home maintenance workshop. It is the first of, uh, we hope to be many this year, um, and we will be talking about home maintenance. Uh, Eric Major from HP Home Services and Bill Liskalit, hopefully I'm not <laughs> butchering his name, from Louisiana Pacific are hosting the workshop for us and are going to be presenting and talking to you about the home maintenance subject. Um, and we hope it'll be very informative for you tonight and hopefully you'll be able to take away some uh, very good information for your homes. Um, also, one thing that I want to point out is that we have surveys on the tables and we would very much appreciate it if before you leave you could fill out the survey. Um, reason is that as we uh, organize future workshops throughout the year. We are really interested in getting your feedback in terms of what are some of the subjects you would like us to target on future workshops. Uh, again, we would like to have workshops on home maintenance, home repairs, and how can we best assist you with the maintenance of your homes. But again, feedback as to how we can best assist you and what we, you would like us to feature in the workshops would be very helpful. So if you don't mind taking a few minutes before you leave, to fill out the surveys, we would greatly appreciate it. And I know Eric has brought uh, many goodies um, for his presentation, and so we are looking forward to uh, all that he has to say. Eric, thank you for coming tonight. We really appreciate your uh, being here tonight. Thank you for having me. Everybody hear me? Yes. yes. Um, so we want to go through, if you look on your tables, I left checklists, some so it says work by referral and some of the checklists that are the same, you flip them over. Um, that sort of will be sort of our agenda. Um, and that, again, she talked about the survey there. Um, the goal of future workshops would be if there are certain aspects from this checklist that you want to focus more in depth on, we can do that with certain workshops. So that's, we're looking for the feedback on those surveys. Kind of go, like I said, go through the sort of a, a guide to maintaining your home um, as we come into spring. Uh, right now, winter, everybody's hunkered down inside. You start walking around, looking at the outside of your house. Uh, stand back and look at the whole entire house: the roof, the siding, the windows, the doors. Look at everything. Walk around. Uh, on your roof, first thing on the list: roofing. Pressure washing a roof, is that a good idea? No. <laughs> Anybody? No. No. Why would we not want to pressure wash our roof? Anybody have any idea? You will blow your shingles off. Um, it, it, depending on how, if you don't do it right, you can blow your shingles off. But you can also hire a company. Why not have our company come pressure wash and they wash them down from the top? It, it, they're not going to blow shingles off. The biggest thing is um, the life shortening of your roof. There's granulars on your roof. And the, when you pressure wash, you're gonna pull those granulars off. You'll see piles, looks like piles of sand in your yard and on your driveway and on your sidewalk. You're actually shortening the life of your home. You will see people do this right before sale. And they're not so worried about the longevity of the roof. They wanna get it, get it through that sale. Um, as you see before and after, yes, it makes the roof look great initially. But again, long term, it's, it's gonna, probably cut it down to a quarter to a third of the life of your roof. Because you're pulling all those granulars, which are the, the structure of that roof, you're, you're pulling all those off. Uh, when you're looking at the roof, things to look at. Flashing around chimney, around skylight, um, any, any protrusions. Um, if there, you've got plumbing vent pipes, attic fans, everything should be flashed. Take a look at that. The condition of, is it peeling up? Shingles themselves, so they started to curl. Curling shingles means they're coming to the end of their life. They've, they've lost their granulars, they've lost the weight, so they're gonna start to curl up. Um, algae growth, you get algae buildup. Um, that comes from debris, like in, in, your, val in your valleys. If you see the valley there, um, you'll see leaf buildup. And those leaves sit there over all winter, and that's what starts to build your algae and your mildew in, in the debris. So you really want to get make sure you have your roofs cleaned. Um, whether you're, you, you're brave enough to get up on the ladder and do it yourself, or you have somebody, but you want to make sure that you're cleaning the roofs off. Um, here's, here's a shot of a uh, pipe collar. 
uh, it's a plumbing vent pipe that comes out. The left side is the failed pipe collar. A very simple repair, but if you don't, if you let it get to the point that this one's at, this, this house now had damage inside. You had rot to the actual rafters of the house, plus drywall damage, plus flooring damage, because it went down through the walls and down the floor. So again, if we stay ahead of this and we notice things starting to buckle, starting to happen, if we stay ahead of it and we do the repair, repair, simple repair to replace the pipe collars, so really simple, versus now having to do a full insurance claim because you've damaged the whole entire house. Uh, Drip edge, drip edge on your roof. Um, most of your older homes don't have drip edge. It wasn't an original part of code. It is now part of code, it is part of any manufacturer certified installer, have to use drip edge. And this is um, the water that comes to the edge. This actually helps the water that gets under the shingle to go into the gutter versus going behind the gutter and starting to rot out your fascia boards. So it goes up the roof and then comes down into the gutter. Ice damming. Um, we had Snowmageddon. Everybody remember Snowmageddon and the horrors of ice damming. The um, ICC actually changed in 2012, changed the actual code with um, adding ice and water shield, which is a membrane that goes down along the eaves. But adding that to the roof doesn't fix the issue. Most of the issues are actual ventilation and if you look at the temperatures here for the roof, um, having soffit ventilation and not having soffit ventilation, having a ridge vent versus just gable vents, um, you can add an attic fan, but you want to get that air circulating. That what happens if you, see, if you see there on the left, you're, you're getting that buildup because there's no, there's no venting to, for the roof at all. So that hot air from the house is going up and sitting in the attic. There's, you got this one on the right has your upgraded insulation, so it's keeping the temperature down, and you're getting that good airflow from the soffit and going out through your ridge vent, and that's natural ventilation. That's the ideal from any roofing manufacturer specifications. Um, again, you can add attic fans to help get that air out of there. Um, you also don't want to have ridge vent, no soffit vent, gable vents, an attic fan. You start to cross ventilate and you're actually again having improper ventilation which by most of the manufacturers improper ventilation will cause no warranty on your shingles so if you have issues they will not warranty the shingles if you don't have proper ventilation so it's not always about the shingle itself it's about the installation and it's about the structure of the house um, any roofer who, who comes to your house and doesn't go in and look in your attic um, you need to make sure that it's ventilated properly. Um, simple soffit can be drilled, depending on the, the structure of the house, can be drilled out. When you replace a roof, you can add invent, which is actually an intake that goes right to the base of your roof. There's things that you can do, because some houses don't have soffit at all. Um, but when you, do, when you drill soffits, you've also got to get up in the attic. Because if you have bad insulation, it's rolled out all the way to the edge, cutting, drilling holes in the soffit won't allow the roof to breathe. You've got to cut that back and put baffles in. Gutters, downspouts. You need to get up and clean gutters, whether you're doing it yourself, again, or, or hiring companies. There's companies that do it for very reasonable prices, or you can put on uh, covers, helmet system, but still any of your screen type systems will still need to be cleaned. Um, most of the houses years ago all had four inch or four and a half inch gutters and two by three downspouts. If you have 30, 40 feet of gutter and it's going to one or two, two by three downspout, all it takes is that little corner, that little spout, the little circle to get clogged and your gutters are backing up. And once they back up without having that drip edge, that's when it gets to the fascia. That's when it goes into your attic, goes into your soffit, runs down behind the siding, does damage that you don't see because the siding itself looks fine, but you get in behind it. Um, we've had several houses as we pull off siding to upgrade siding and whole structures of houses have rotted out behind. The siding was fine from the outside, so it looked great. But because they had issues with gutters and fascia damage, it had gotten in and it just runs and creates, again, more damage. <laughs> Things that are obvious signs, the one on the left side, where you actually get plant growth. You, you laugh at it, but I see it all the time. And that's, that's, that's from years. That's not from a winter without maintenance. That's from, that's from years of no maintenance whatsoever. And again, it, that causes as, aspects for your ice damming to better chances for your ice damming to happen. 
it also that's when that's when you start to get the issues with aphasia and again creating more work if you just get up and clean gutters again there's companies out there who will do it for 50 75 dollars you can have about two three times a year if you don't want to get up in the gutter yourself um, siding cleaning siding check all all wood surfaces for weathering paint failure inspect again houses over time will start to settle stuff moves your side you want to look at seams where your door trim meets your siding where your window trim meets your siding check the caulk again obvious signs of deterioration issues with siding um, the one on the right where you see circled again you start to see those bubbles if you don't get in there and do something you can come in and you can patch repair that and paint that but what's going on behind that what happened behind that what caused that that didn't rot from the outside in that's from the inside out so what's going on under there um, you're looking at looking at your your caulk your, your sealants um, shrinkage to the bead the bead's not sticking where you can actually peel up like a string peel like a shoestring peel it right off um, any cracking powdering <coughs> Again, you, this should be checked yearly. Even with even with the best best sealants that are out there, still you still want to make sure you're checking this, just because stuff stuff shifts. Um, areas to check where the siding siding meets the foundation around air ducts, heating, cooling equipment, any any penetration through the siding where the windows meet the, meet the door frame or door frames meet the siding around your skylights on your roof chimney where the chimney meets the siding also where the chimney is on the roof landscaping you want to stay up on your landscaping um, anybody here have squirrels in their attic ever ever have an issue with squirrels or, or rodents or anything in their attic have trees around your house do you have trees around your house those tree limbs are like stairways for the squirrels to your attic. They want places to hibernate for the winter. You want all branches to be at least seven feet away from your roof or away from your house. They, they can actually leap. If you get it under, under six feet, they can actually leap from those trees right onto your roof and they're right in those gable vents, any penetration. They look for any way to get inside to that warmer temperature in the winter. Windows, door sills. Um, this gets into your drafts. If you're, you're in the house and you don't have the heating or air conditioning running, curtains are blowing. Let's look at the let's look at the, the windows and doors. Simple things that can do versus having to truly replace the whole door or replace the whole window. On the left side, that threshold. See that screw there? That threshold can be adjusted up and down. So if you're getting you're getting leaks under your door, you can change out the door sweep. It's very simple. It's on the bottom of the door and then you can adjust your sill plate. Um, on the right side, the window before and after, um, you have options of wrapping your wood, depending on clusters and what's, what's allowed, but you have the options of wrapping. You have options of converting over to maintenance-free products, PVC, composite products. Again, depending on, on what your cluster standards are, um, get into, they have a higher initial cost, but they don't have the maintenance down the road, long term. Um, but if you don't stay up up on the maintenance, and that's just uh, scraping, painting, repainting, it will create more issues. Not just that, that rotten sill. If you let it sit, again, it will then create damage to the structure of the home, then into your drywall, and it can get down to flooring, it can, and that can go down, starts on the top level, it can work its way all the way through from on a townhouse from th three levels all the way down to the basement and do structural damage. Window seal failure. <coughs> this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to replace your windows. You can replace glass. You can upgrade glass. If you have double pane glass, the old glass was just clear glass. It was double pane, which was better than single pane in the old, old windows, but it had no insulation. New, you can get new insulated units that will go into that existing window. Um, but if you let, it, let them sit, like the one, the bottom right, that, the whole sealant there, the, the bead now, so now it's gotten in under that, so it's probably messed with the structure of that actual window. Um, the one on the bottom left, you're starting to get the mold, the mildew in there. Um, but signs, signs look for is that cloudiness. When you go to clean the window, you clean the inside, you clean the outside, and it's still dirty, that, that means you've got seal failure on an insulated unit. 
But again, you can replace you can replace glass units versus having to replace whole windows. But if you let them sit, it will start to mess with the structure of the window, depending on, again, if it's an aluminum window, it's a vinyl window, it's a wood window. Your old original wood windows, most of them are single pane. Um, you can replace single panes of that, but you're not going to have the seal failure aspect because they're, they're not insulated units. Foundation. Again, walk, walk the property. Um, again, signs you can see inside is, again, start seeing those settlement cracks in the drywall. Start, look, that's, a, that's a sign that you want to go look. Is, is it a bigger thing? There, settlement, it's, every house is going to settle. It, it's, every house is going to settle. But is there underlying issues? Are there, are there actual foundation issues that are of concern? Um, look around, around doors. Door, doors that now won't close all the way or close at all. The frames have shifted. If they've started shifting that much, something's going on. Is it a foundation issue? Um, go down your basement, walk inside, walk outside. Um, decks, fences. Uh, probably one of the easiest things to maintain, but everybody waits. How often, how often should you seal a deck? Anybody, an idea? Once a year. <laughs> every year. Every year. And everybody says, oh, yeah, we'll do it next year. We'll do it next year. And again, as debris builds up on the deck, that's when you start to get the mildew, and that's when you start getting uh, the buckling. Um, old decks were all nailed. Now when you do decks, the best way to do a deck now is screws. Nail, the nails will pop up, screws will not pop up. Um, on the picture on the right, you've got the old deck, you have a clean deck, and then you have a stained deck. Just cleaning the deck, you'd be amazed at looking at some of these decks, and you're like, that deck's gotta be torn down and rebuilt. But just cleaning that deck, and maybe replacing a couple bad boards, and you, you'll, it'll look like a brand new deck. It doesn't necessarily need to be replaced. It may look like it would initially. Questions? <coughs> Anybody got any questions? Yes? How soon after you replace a uh, furnace should you get a maintenance contract? Is there some length of time after you replace your furnace that you don't need a maintenance or? No, you should, you should set up, you should set up. Right away? Right away. Right yep. away, okay. Um, again, I didn't get to ev everything on the checklist yesterday. You need filters, very simple, but you can cause yourself Huge expenses if you don't change, if you don't change that air filter. Um, not necessarily a right time frame on when did, you should be checking it every 30 to 60 days. You're like, ooh, I've been months. Um, check it. It doesn't necessarily need to be replaced, but you should be checking it. Uh, again, a five dollar filter is a lot better than thousand dollar repair or full replacement. About tuck point and brick exteriors. About what? Tuck point and brick exteriors. Um, How often? It, 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 every every year you should be doing a visual inspection on everything. Um, again, you get settlement. You can get more more joints that are coming out and that kind of stuff. But everything everything should be inspected every year. Can you get um, insulated windows? I have the old wooden divided light. Things. Can you get glass that's insulated that you can put in those little frames or? Yes, but it'll cost you more than a new window. <laughs> the answer is yes, you could, but it's going to cost you. It's, they're, they're, it's going to you're going to you're going to modify the window, and it's going to cost you more than than a full new window. <clears throat> Anybody else got any any questions? Yes. Um, what about like hooded gutters and stuff? You know, you buy them. The helmet, helmet systems. You you still want to you still want to maintain. You still want to do a visual inspection. Um, when you get the helmet systems, that narrows that opening. For so you can't you can still get debris. You typically want they'll keep the debris out of the gutter themselves. But if you get any of that area gets clogged, you always want to check, especially going into winter, because if you get that, that's another another. Big aspect with the helmet systems that when it comes to the ice damming, mm -hmm. most of the times when we have to tear down gutters off houses, it's that because the debris has gotten stuck up there and they haven't cleaned them off, and then it, it creates those ice dams. But it does keep the debris out of your gutter. <coughs> Anybody else got any, any questions? 
No? Um, I have Bill Lescout from LP, Louisiana Pacific, with the SmartSide product. I um, want to give him a little bit of chance to introduce that product. It is a um, newer product. It's an alternative. It's an engineered product. 50-year uh, warranty on the product. 30-year if you go with one of their finishes on the finish warranty. And I'm going to turn it over to him to give you a little bit of introduction into that product. I'm starting to get a lot of questions about it here in, in Reston with the Cedar Homes. How you guys doing this evening? Good. Good. Yeah. Everything exciting? I got uh, Eric's shirt with you today, like rotten windows and <laughs> rotten siding and making sure you're checking the outside and making sure it looks good. One of the, uh, I, I'm Bill, I cover the Mid-Atlantic for LP. So uh, we're one of the largest manufacturers of, of OSB in the world. So you could see if you go to Home Depot, these big LP in black on the orange stack of OSB. Has anybody ever been into a Home Depot and saw that? Okay, so that's our product, one of them. So when you're thinking LP, don't just think smart side, think the whole exterior portion of your home, structural beams, um, pretty much everything that holds the exterior part of the house up. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm all about demonstration, is show you a quick demo on our product. It's a wood-based product. Bear with me one second, I'm gonna put this down. So we have, I'm, I'm better without a microphone. Can everybody hear me? Okay, great. So we have 17 mills across the United States, two in Chile, and uh, we manufacture this product in the U.S. out of those 17 mills. And we have one in Roxboro, North Carolina, one in Two Harbors, Minnesota, and uh, there's a couple throughout the Midwest. This product started in the Midwest and it worked its way out from there to California on the West Coast. We've done very well. We've taken it to a billion dollars in sales. And now we're rolling it towards the East Coast. So for the past three years, this has been my mission for LP is to roll SmartSide out to consumers like yourself. So if you look at the demonstration that I showed you here, this is fiber cement, brand X, doesn't matter whose brand it is. Um, the way that we manufacture siding is we take the smaller basswood trees and aspen trees and we grind them up into pieces about the size of a house garden. Okay. So then we dry them down to about a four to six percent moisture content and then we introduce chemicals in, into there. The chemicals are unharmful, so you have zinc borate, which everybody's heard of borax soap. Lysine has borax in it, so they won't harm you. So you got waxes and glues and resins, twice the amount of resins that goes into a sheet of OSB. And does everybody know what OSB is? No, okay. It's oriented strand board. So basically, we take these chips and make it into a geometrical shape, and it creates a four by eight sheet gives you a shear factor for building a home. So that same technology goes into our side. This is a piece of lap siding, so we take those and encapsulize all those strands in that zinc borate, hydrophobic waxes, and marine glues, and then we lay them out strategically on a mat. You can watch this on how it's made. We were on their show. This uh, material goes from nothing up to about six or eight inches thick, and then they mash it down to seven sixteenths or three eighths, and you, it becomes a product on the outside. So this base product has a five-year labor and material warranty, and then a 50-year overall warranty. So some of the products out there that this, like this one would match to, would be T111, which has no warranty. This comes with a 550. So as you look at the demonstration, this is the fiber cement I was talking about, and you see the water sits on the back of the product okay. Look at mine, and it's got, looks like rain -X on the back here. You can move around like jello. Um, as I migrate this towards the edge, you'll find, Margo, mm -hmm. what are you seeing? It's dripping off the side. And what else is it doing? Puddling. Is this product changing color? Do you think it's soaking into that product? Yeah, it definitely is. Okay. So you remember the smart guard process I was telling you about? If we take my product and run it to the edge, 
it runs off every piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I was to break this in, into pieces, pour the water on the inside, the smart guard process is through and through the product. So that's how we're able to put a 550 warranty on the product itself. You can also get it pre-finished, and the pre-finished just comes in 12 basic colors. And you can do any custom color that you would want. That's where we kind of set ourselves apart from the competition of that whole smart guard process. So is this something that you guys feel you could fit on your home and the rest of the market? As I drove through the, um, what do you guys call them, pods? Clusters. Clusters. That's clusters. <laughs> As I drove through the clusters today, <laughs> and I seem to do a lot of driving. I drove uh, over a thousand miles in the last three days, but I wanted to check out the, the area and see what, if this product would actually fit, and it does. A lot of the homes out there have this T111 look. We also have the lap um, trim. It's a large feature for us. We have four, six, eight, ten, and twelve inch widths. We have over a hundred different profiles to offer you. Um, not everything's on the table back there, but if you look at the paint warranty alone that goes on top of this, like the belt and suspenders approach to the business, you have 550 on the base product and then a 15 year warranty on the paint or a 30 year warranty on the paint. That's double with the competition. Is. So, um, have you talked to Reston Association about getting this approved for this? Um, <laughs> that's the first question we're going to ask. Sure. Love to have it. Eric, we'll right. probably answer that. Is that right? There you go. To, to answer that question, yes. It, it, um, if you would like to see it in your cluster, right. we need to talk to your cluster about updating standards. Okay. Um, yeah. Cluster here can tell me. I don't. I think several clusters already have it as an approved oh, option. Okay, so it's already been. It's gone through yes. the whole gauntlet of approved. We, we've done. We've done several houses. Okay. If you want to see an actual house, I can get you an address to a house. No, no, that's um, fine. But yes, it, it, but I knew the process. Yes, I was just asking. So I started it. <laughs> One of the the other things I didn't touch on before I answer another question is the durability of the product. So we have our standard fiber cement. And if I were to take this fiber cement back to the edge of it, no. mm -hmm. okay. but I just bashed it, but no problem at all, right? So, we've got kids in the neighborhood shooting BB guns, or showing the bikes, or woodpeckers. Um, that zinc fluorate that I talked about will stop the rot and mold the case cycle completely. So, the rotting and the molding and the cane he was talking about on trim and siding is gone with our product. And the durability speaks for itself. What's the price point uh, compared to the um, cement based uh, board? We sell it as a premium product, so we're going to tell you that it's about the same. It's what you pay for fiber cement. Okay. The longevity, the warranty that's on it, the paint okay. finish that goes on top of it, it's double what they're offering. So you're saying it's it's about the same price, but you're very getting... very, very comparable price point. Yes. Okay. I have a question. I'm trying to understand if that's in the cluster I live in. The top part of the house is wood, and now they're doing some are doing the vinyl siding. Um, so it's big, vertical, wide wood slats. And then the bottom part, so that's a color, and then the bottom part's white, and I call it pseudo stucco. I don't know. It, yeah. Right. Is, is that for the bottom part of the house? Like in my case, for the townhouse? Or for, that would be the top part. The size yeah, the top. Yep. Okay, so we all heard over 100 different profiles of the product, right? 4x8 mm -hmm. sheets, 4x9 sheets, 4x10 sheets, 4x12 sheets, 4x16 sheets, they're all different types, all different widths. There's two different bases on the product line. I was talking about the strand technology that we have. It's a structural type of product. It looks like the four and the strand work that I'm saying, the four by eight for structural sheathing. We also offer a fiber product. And then we can do the deeper emboss products. Same warranty, same everything. 550 on the base, and then you get this painted, finish, same finish. It's just we use the fiber base products to get a deeper embossment in the middle. How does this compare with Hardy Plank in terms of longevity? What are the differences and how does it compare from a price oh, sure. uh, Longevity, again, 550. Their warrant is uh, 10 on their trim, 30 on their base uh, panels and lap. Uh, so two different warranties on one home. Um, we're 550 across the board. So that tells you we believe in our product. 
tested at 70 and a half years in Hilo, Hawaii, where they have the highest promotion termite uh, population in the world. They get about 170 inches of rain annually, and it's about 80% humidity year-round, so the product will perform. And we've tested it in that time to make sure that it will. And from a, pr and from a pr price perspective, how does it weigh against our we're, I say we're, we're a premium product, because as you can see, we're going to perform on the wall. So we're about the same as what you're looking at with Hardy. Could be a few bucks more depending on what paint finish you go with, um, but we're right about the same as what Hardy Plank is. Yes, sir. You make that in a board and batten, and uh, if you choose the, the, the unfinished and paint it yourself, uh, what type of durability do you have on the paint? Do you have to repaint that? It depends on the paint manufacturer you're going to use. So we use companies like Sherwin Williams and Valspar, which are multi-billion dollar companies, so they're going to be there for a long time. If you decide to paint it on your own, and I would suggest to go with a Sherwin Williams or Valspar or some type of company that's going to be around for some time. Um, most paint warranties, when you're painting in it vertically in the, uh, the field, are about 20 years, uh, depending on application. If you do a one coat, it could be 15. It just depends on the paint manufacturer. And you do a board and batten? You make the we do, yes. Uh, so we have, you can do a smooth sheet and put battens sheets, battens over top of it every uh, 16 or 12 inches. Or you can get this wood grain and a no groove, which is the same exact panel, but it has no grooves in it. Okay. And then we also have a reverse board and batten. So it doesn't have the batten strip sticking out. It's actually in, in, in concave like the... Uh, like this eight inch on center would be. Any other questions? Thank you for having me. There's the reverse board bat. Thank you. Anybody else have any, any questions? No? How much more is it going to cost to get something painted? I looked at your colors earlier. And doesn't have the uh, Williamsburg light blue color. That <laughs> That's the best part about our program. So we know that these 12 colors won't fit everybody's, or these nine colors that we have won't fit everybody's taste. So if you have a specific color that you would like to have painted, we can do custom colors also. So anything within the rainbow. Now if you stay within if you stay within a certain color frame, so if you look at Hardy, Nichiha, Certainty, Allura, all these basic paint uh, colors that other manufacturers offer, if you stay within that realm, you'll be very competitive what you see with the competition. If you go way out of there and you want to do canary yellow or something like that, um, where the paint manufacturer has to bring a base in, then the price could go up considerably. Okay. The other thing I wanted to add, uh, Eric actually attended one of our Build Smart programs that we have in the Baltimore, Maryland market last year. And um, it's basically us teaching them best practices on how to install the product. Uh, so Eric's company is certified through LP SmartSides program to install our product to specification to make sure that that 550 warranty lasts for you as a homeowner. So just wanted to add that. Thank you. Um, any, any, anybody got any other questions for me or for Bill? Yes. When I uh, kicked up your pamphlet over there on roofing, and I'm curious, um, as a consumer, the true different um, definition duration shingles, why is this product versus another? Um, in your goodie bags, there was a little strip in there. I didn't get it. Oh. We'll get you a goodie bag. Um, <laughs> Big na names, names in roofing you, you hear are um, GAF, um, Certainty, and Owens Corning. Those are your those are your three big players. There are other small smaller guys out there. Owens Corning is the only one that uses this smart SureGuard smart smart technology, and it's actually a strip that is where the where your, where your nails are. It's a synthetic strip. Um, and they've used they've tested that strip literally towing vehicles, connecting two vehicles together by tow hitches and towing vehicles. And so that's the point where your nails will enter into the sheathing of your roof. Um, so that was our big reason for choosing Owens Corning as our primary brand. Um, again, we can get, we can get any, of the, any of the brands out there. Um, as far as the true definition, um, in general, 
single wise from all the manufacturers across the board, they are slowly trying to phase out the three tab shingle and going to the definition, the architectural shingle, which gives a little bit more definition for just being the flat roof. Um, most of them have now gone down to four to six colors in your standard three tab roof, pushing towards the architectural, and then they have upgrade options in the architectural. It, biggest, biggest difference with the architectural is from all the manufacturers now, you're gonna get a lifetime warranty. If you're dealing with a certified installer, depending on which product it is, they will back the installation for anywhere from five to 20 years. Um, also, wind. The architecture shingle is rated at 130 miles an hour. Your standard three tab is rated anywhere between 50 and 70, depending on the manufacturer. Does that answer answer question? Yeah. Anybody anybody else have any questions? So can you just explain that strip that it's instead of nails? Is that no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's where the nails go in. It's the point where they go in. It's a synthetic strip, so it's stronger. So you don't, you have a lot less chance for blow off. Um, I am here, I'm in Reston all the time. Um, the advisors here see me here in the actual Reston Association. Um, hopefully I'll be here more with even more applications for, for projects down the road. Um, I'm only a phone call away. Um, in the goodie bag should be my card. There's also our magnet. You can contact me anytime if you have any questions. I wanna thank you all for coming out and joining us. Please grab those surveys. Please fill out those surveys. If there's something else that you'd like to see talked about in future workshops or anything from the checklist that I went through that you'd like more in-depth information on, let us know and we will gear this to you guys and what you guys are looking for. Turn back to Anna. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. As Eric mentioned, I want to make sure that everybody um, is aware. Eric has been doing a great deal of work in the Reston area, so he's very familiar with all the cluster neighborhoods, all the single family homes. He's been assisting many of the residents with the DRB process, uh, helping them uh, uh, fill out applications to get projects approved through the DRB. So he is a great resource um, as well. Obviously, you see that there's Covenants advisors here that can answer questions for you. But we have found that you know we have a great partnership with Eric because he's helping the residents, and that's obviously our goal is to you know make your life easier and get you know all your needs met or you know as many of the needs met that we can with your homes. And so, um, like I said, you know he's such a great resource that I would reach out to him uh, if you need to, if you have a project that you want to uh, do with your home and you need to get approval through the DRB. Um, he's really helpful with the application process. He can provide assistance and advice um, on how to get applications filled out um, and how to get the projects uh, completed. So um, again, you have his card and your uh, goodie bags, but please feel, out, feel free to reach out to him and obviously to our Covenant staff. Um, we are here Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5, um, and uh, happy to help you any way we can. Um, again, we really are interested in getting your feedback on how we can help you with future workshops. Uh, let us know if you don't have time to fill out the survey this evening. You know, if you want to take it with you and send it back in to us, that's also fine. Um, but really looking forward to helping you in the future with uh, more workshops. Um, if you have not filled out your little registration card for our door prize, we have a couple door prizes. Um, please fill those out if you have not. We'll do that in a few minutes. Um, also, with this partnership with Rest Association, um, I went back to our owner and kind of got some incentives for members of Reston Association. I'm going to go through a couple of them. Um, things to think about as you look at projects. Um, we're offering free installation on windows, up to 10 windows. We have free house wrap with any complete siding replacement. We're doing free gutters up to 100 feet with a new roof. Free countertops with a complete kitchen or bathroom model. And a free $500 deck lighting package with a deck minimum of 140 square, square feet. And those will be running for this entire year for 2015. 
Anybody got registration cards? Drawings? Okay. 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 Okay.